Do you ever feel like your brain is going to explode with sleep deprivation and questions and concerns and anxiety all around parenting? Yes, I do for sure. Hi guys, welcome to the Mindful Mommies podcast, Mindful, full as in F-U-L-L. I am Brianne Morissette. And I am Stina Martinez. And we are sisters-in-law, and combined, we have four very busy boys. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Mindful Mummies podcast. I'm Stina, and I'm here with Bree and with Desiree from Rock a Baby, who is here today to talk to us a little bit about something that is very prominent in our lives right now, right, Bree? That's right. <laughs> Which yeah. is toddler behavior and some strategies for dealing with challenging toddler behaviors. So we had Desiree on before talking about all about sleep and strategies for sleep. And, um, and she actually knows a lot about um, behavior as well. And we were just talking a little bit before we got started here about how behavior is so interconnected with sleep. Yes. So, yes. We're very excited to have her here. Um, she's going to be talking a little bit about the science behind language and then how you can use child-led choice-based strategies to help when you're in those very difficult toddler situations and yeah. meltdowns. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Bree and I... And with my, like, foggy brain <laughs> right now with how little sleep I'm getting, um, can you just explain exactly what you mean by that for us moms? Okay, yeah. all... sorry, 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 yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So it's going to be multiple parts that we're going to be talking about. So when I say the science behind sleep and... Or sorry, sorry, not sleep language. It's my background's in NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming. And I have developed a whole strategy of language and, you know, behavioral techniques and essentially how to more effectively speak to your child so that they can connect and understand and how we're going to use our words intentionally versus just saying things that, you know, whether it's discipline or should we discipline or how we discipline and how we phrase our sentences so that it lands a lot better with our child's little brain and they can receive it Mm -hmm. because a lot of what we say ends up in conflict or ends up in a tantrum or ends Mm -hmm. up leaving everyone frustrated and there's just you know it's not effective so everything that we do here and the strategies that I'm going to teach you in the language, like I said, is child-led choice-based because nobody wants to be told what to do. (laughs) The child really does have to make their own choices and decisions. Having us set them up for that is what we're going to talk about today and how we're going to teach you to do that with your language and using different strategies. Awesome. Exactly what we need. We definitely need that. I know that many of our listeners know already, but I have a two and a half year old Mm -hmm. and a two month old baby, as well as an eight year old. So my two and a half year old is struggling quite a bit right now, I think, with the adjustment um, to having a new baby and also just being two and a half. I mean, sometimes I don't even think he realizes the baby's there, Um, but he definitely realizes that he doesn't have my full attention all the time, which is uh, quite a big problem right now and resulting in lots of like showdowns where he, I posted a little bit on Instagram, (laughs) photos of him when he just lies in the middle of the street and refuses to look at me and just like goes silent lying in the middle of the street. It's really fun. (laughs) <laughs> and then Bree. Yeah, and I have a four-year-old, which I asked Desiree, is still considered a toddler, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we feel It feels like he's still a toddler. Um, and I have a two-and-a-half-year-old, too. So we got, yeah, some major stuff going on in our house right now that I'm, yeah, excited to learn some strategies for. for yeah. Sure. So we're in the, in the thick of it. And then we've been asking our followers, both Desiree and us, for questions they have about toddler behavior. So we're going to be getting to those as well. So if you guys have asked a question, um, we'll be addressing those as well. Asking the expert. So I think what would be good as a starting point, because you guys are here and I can ask you the details that I need, um, is tell me a little bit about, you know, the reality of what really is going on. Because I think it's really important for people to know 
the, I think everyone feels like they're the only one a lot of the time oh, really absolutely struggling with yeah. things or the way that they react to their children isn't what you know it said to do in the book or what I said to do yeah or yeah. it's like everybody else at the park is so calm and I'm like losing or what you my think other mind. moms are doing yeah. at the park or what, yeah, yeah. yeah. you feel like the bad parent who's yeah losing it and, totally yeah. and I or think the one that's the only one that's completely overwhelmed yeah and that's just not true you know everyone I talk to which is a huge part why I created like I have my Facebook group page which is a private group it's Rock of Babies Baby Talk and it's such a supportive place for people to really feel like they're connected to somebody else who's going through the same thing like I can't tell you how many times I'll look at you know the group in the morning and see people who posted you know throughout the middle of the night and how many other people are up also experiencing the same thing or you know I just read posts today about toddler stuff and it's like everybody's just there to support you because they've been through it and it's like yeah me too me too me too or how many following 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 and it's like Mm -hmm. you're not alone Mm -hmm. there's this is really really normal it's super overwhelming and there's a lot of information and a lot of it's really judgmental Mm -hmm. I think or or the shoulds you know Mm -hmm. I, I see that a lot in my um, line of work where it's like, well, I know I shouldn't be doing this because X, Y, and Z, or I know I should do this because, you know, if I don't, it's going to create a bad habit. And I feel like that's a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. everything I do, whether it's with sleep and younger kids or toddlers, like I really try to make people feel like they can achieve it and make it easier for, for the family and like take the load off. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like realistic things that you could do. Not like you have to stay in your house all day and do X, Y, and Z and practice this and make charts. Like, yeah. those, that's not what I'm going to ask my clients to do. So yeah. I think it would be helpful to talk about your some of your personal experiences mm-hmm. and, you know, where that difficulty is coming up. How are you guys, you know, finding that you're experiencing the tough times? How are you responding and how is your child responding? Mm-hmm. And then we can dive into some, like, specifics about mm-hmm. how would we handle that. And, like, mm-hmm. also really normalizing what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, when I hear that, first of all, I think to myself, okay, how am I responding? I'm responding totally based on where I'm at emotionally myself, too. Like, I think, yeah. like, I am, I, on days, I can do it. I can follow through I can do the right things and there are other days where I just I just throw in the towel I'm like I can't do this I'm I'm my head's gonna pop off like (laughs) so um so yeah I mean where do where do we start with explaining what's going on in my house because I got a lot (laughs) so what's a scenario right now that's like a high like what's stress. a boiling point high stress scenario right now that's going on? Yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. So one one of the things that's that's happening, um, like first of all, it's just chaos because I have two little boys and they're they wrestle and they fight and they push and you know it's it's so physical and that's something that I'm struggling with I think mm-hmm. as a mom because I was raised with girls and it's just like a totally different world. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm having a hard time adapting to that. But what I would say probably one of the, the things that's really coming up for us is um, is there's there's a lot of the older brother is really frustrated with the younger one. Mm-hmm. And he he retaliates by kicking, pushing, hitting, scratching. Um, and in some ways, I am like, okay, that's understandable because the little brother came over and snatched a toy that he was, you know, very quietly playing with, and now he's after him to, like, he's running after him, and he pushes him and hits him or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so that's, like, a constant in our house. And I feel like I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm like a referee. I'm a constant referee. Mm-hmm. And then the little one, when the big one pushes, then the little one you know, pushes back or hits back. (laughs) So, yeah. And what's the conversation or the, is there discipline around it? Is there a consequence? Like what happens from you on your end? How do you referee? What are the words you're saying? What are the feelings you're feeling? Um, so, uh, right away with the, it's tough because 
I think at first I was sort of oblivious to the fact that the little brother was really upsetting the big brother. And so I, I was more really mad with the bigger brother. Mm-hmm. Like I, I just started to mm-hmm. click that like, he's really frustrated with his little brother. He's not just like trying to hurt him. He just doesn't know how to express his frustration. Right. And, mm-hmm. and so what will happen is before I was like, it would be like instant, uh, I would say, okay, you, you're hitting, now you need to go for a timeout. Okay, so some of the kids have just walked in, so you might hear some kids in the background, but I'm going to get back to how I responded was, um, so I, what, what happens with us is often the older one will hit the younger one out of frustration, and I'll go, okay, if you're hitting, then you need to go for a timeout. And then he goes, now what we used to do was we used to, we used to have, we do have a little gate at the bottom of our stairs that we pull out from the wall and I put him on the stairs and I never put him, I've never put him where he can't see me. It's always where he can see me. Um, and I say, he's not, he's not happy. I'm frustrated. I'm like, usually, yeah, when I, sometimes I feel like I can be calm and like follow through and then there are other times where I'm like oh like you're in here that's it you go straight to the timeout you know right and and then what will happen is he'll be obviously really upset and I'll say um when you're ready to behave and treat your brother nicely then you can come back you let me know when you're ready to try again that's what I say and how does he usually respond to that? He'll say, right away, I'm ready. And then how do you do and then we just try, like right away? We try again. Okay. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Right. Okay. Yeah. And where do you feel is like the biggest source of conflict for the kids? Like do you notice? Is it, are they hungry? Are they tired? Is it nap time? Is it like, do you know, are you busy in the kitchen? Are you busy doing something where you can't be paying attention. Has it been a stressful day? Has it been a rushed day where you're finding that these things come up? It's usually at, no, I mean, it's usually in the morning when we're trying to get ready to go or it's after a long day of programs or, you know, um, yeah, I'm trying to get dinner going or, um, and I just need them to like, keep themselves busy yeah. and like just give me a second because <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get dinner going and I'm just trying to get like something happening for the evening you know yeah. yeah for sure yeah and I think that that's something that's really common too is like I always tell people I'm like well what's the situation like look at the situation and let's see you know what are we setting them up for what are we setting ourselves up for mm-hmm. are we high stress how's that looking oh, and yeah. if our energy is off like first and foremost Above all else, if your energy is off, it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And that's the hardest thing to do is, like, check yourself, get calm, you know? Yeah, easier Relax. said than done. Yeah. You know, totally easier said than done. And so see how you're feeling. Check it with yourself for a minute in those times when you know. And just take the extra minute because I always tell people, like, when we're in a rush, when we're in a hurry – things tend to un- unfold in a way that we don't want them to and get way more stressful than they need to be, and it takes twice as long. Mm-hmm. And let's take a, f- a few extra minutes to set them up maybe a little bit differently. I like to do things in those times where, um, and this actually comes with a question I had from one of the followers where it was like, what do we do with you know new baby? How do we help introduce new baby with toddler? And this is one of the things I often recommend is have like a busy basket or something where you have a, a, a basket of things that they get to play with only when you're busy. And it's like exciting for them to look forward to playing with that specific thing because they don't get it all the time. It's not just there anytime they want it. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like when mom's breastfeeding a baby and the toddler's running around or jumping all over mm-hmm. them. And it's like, I really need you to just let me do this because I physically can't not sit here and do that right now. Mm-hmm. And they're just freaking out or they're jumping on you. And it's like, that's not working. Right. Mm-hmm. So having a basket of whether it's stickers um, things that are safe for them to be independent with and as the kids are older obviously they can have more you know more complex things to do but 
things that they only get when you are busy that are really motivating for them to want to sit and do that will keep them happy. Mm -hmm. You know, and if it's younger toddlers who, you know, can't communicate very well yet, or if it's a single child, usually they want to be with you. They're not, like, you guys have the opportunity to have, you live in a house with all your, you you guys, you know, are in the house together, essentially, Mm -hmm. and your kids are always together, so they play together, Mm -hmm. right? If you're a single child, you probably want to be in the space where your parent is. So if mom's cooking dinner and the kid is just crying at your feet, holding onto your leg, like that's tough. Mm-hmm. So having a drawer of things that you know that they can reach themselves, they can pull in, pull out, kind of, you know, play with things in the kitchen with you. Mm-hmm. Those are also really fun things to do where you rotate that drawer. Is it different utensils and kitchen things? Kids usually don't want to play with their own toys at that time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they want mm-hmm. things that aren't theirs yeah. Yeah. Um, and that they shouldn't play with. So have a bunch of things that are accessible to them, like plan things so that you have options that are exciting for them and something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. You've got to think about everything being something to look forward to, Mm -hmm. okay? So if it's a time where they're losing, we'll talk about connection here and and attachment, um, there's losses of connection all day long, right? So especially if your kids are going to school at all or going to a daycare or you have childcare or someone goes to work, there's a loss of connection at multiple times of the day. So say, for example, a mom who's, you know, in the morning, they're getting their, their kids ready for daycare and they're going to work, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, you're rushed in the morning. Mm-hmm. Have at least five minutes where you guys plan for, hey, what are we going to do? And this is something you plan for the night before, right? So that they go to sleep having something to look forward to. This also helps them, motivate them to want to go to sleep as well. We have plans for tomorrow. They know what's coming up, Mm -hmm. right? So it's, oh, we're going to do, you know, let's pick our activity and set it up before we go up to bed. And let's have Lego or we'll do a puzzle or we'll read this book. Plan for that five or ten minutes. It doesn't have to be a long time. But we need to create points of connection where we're filling their cup. We're, we're giving them a lot, right? Mm-hmm. We're undivided attention. That's a time where put your phone away. Do not be distracted. Give them 100% of your attention. Mm-hmm. And know that this, this is the time I'm filling their cup. Mm-hmm. We're all going to be better off for it, mm-hmm. right? It can be small bursts. It doesn't have to be, oh, I had to sit and play with you for an hour. Nobody really can do that. <laughs> yeah. 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 People are like, oh, but I'm, I'm a stay-at-home mom. You know, yeah. I'm with them all day. Well, you're probably doing a lot of other things all day, too, and it's really easy to think that because I'm here all day, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Well, you're probably distracted sometimes. You have to do other things. Mm -hmm. And having that intentional time that you spend with them to fill their cup the right way, Mm -hmm. where we're we're giving them unasked for attention, Mm -hmm. okay? So I see a lot of what I call, like, negative attention seeking, Mm -hmm. where kids will... And especially you guys, you've got, you know, cumulatively, you have quite a few kids in the same space together frequently, right? So to get your attention, they have to maybe escalate sometimes in order for that to happen. Yeah. And if, (laughs) you know, if when I hit my brother and I push my brother or Alternatively, when I come and snatch my brother's toy away from him, mm-hmm. this big emotional explosion ensues, and now I have your attention. Now there's energy happening. There's big energy around this, and my cup is my cup is being filled by that. Right. So it doesn't matter. Like kids, you know, when they're so young, don't really understand and can't process how do I fill my cup the right way and how do I want to feel Mm -hmm. versus where's the energy coming from? How do I get this attention from you? Oh, well, when I hit, when I push, when I this, when I that, I get this big response from you and that's a big reaction. Mm -hmm. You know, we see it in little kids when they're first learning to eat and they're seeing a cause and effect. Mm -hmm. We see them practice cause and effect with, am I, I'm going to throw my food on the ground and your reaction says everything. Mm -hmm. So it's like, hey, don't, and they're like, don't do, oh, don't do that. It's like, well, I dropped my food and you freaked out. Like, you know, something happened there. There was a big response. Right. So 
looking at that and seeing what is your response, what is your reaction, and that's big energy. Mm -hmm. So we need to redirect that somewhere else, mm -hmm. and we need to make sure that we're filling their cup and giving them big energy without that being that you know the way and their road to getting the attention. Right. Yes. It's interesting, isn't it? Like, yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? It's coming at it from a preventative. Totally. Yeah. yeah. You have to be in prevention mode, but also it's, it's for yourself, for your own sanity, because mm -hmm. those extra few minutes where you're intentionally thinking about it versus coming to a place where you're like, okay, well, when it happens, here's what I'm going to do. You yeah. know? It's like, how do I prevent that from happening? Mm -hmm. What do I do to make sure that I can set them up the best I can, and then if it still happens anyways, okay, you know, how, how are we going to deal with it, mm -hmm. right? At that point, that's something that we can look at as well, but we could probably do a lot. Like, I had a little guy, I had a client contact me a few weeks ago, and they just said, you know, we think that we're out of luck. We have a, t a two-year-old, and they had worked with someone, a, a, a mother sleep consultant, who they'd essentially done a form of crying it out, which I never practice, mm -hmm. with their two-year-old, who they'd moved into a toddler bed. And they were, like, locking him in his room, oh, and yeah. it was like, well, you know, you're going to have to shut the door. Well, no, you're going to have to put him back in the crib now. And, you know, the dad said to me, I've been told, and I've talked to a few other people, he's too young to be in this toddler bed. And he was having meltdowns all the time. He was hitting. He was freaking out all the time. He was always having tantrums. Everything was a problem. Blankets were a problem. Socks were a problem. Putting shoes on were a problem. Getting into the car was a problem. Everything you can think of was a conflict and a problem. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of consequencing. There was a lot of taking away from. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at night when he would try to go to bed, they would, if he wasn't lying in his bed, they would take his teddy bear away. It was like all of this Aww. taking away from and yeah. removing, 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 and there wasn't a lot of connection, 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 right? right. So they were really skeptical because they obviously paid a lot of money to have somebody help them, and this is really traditional ways of practicing, which I see and break my heart all the time because people don't think that there's a different option. Mm -hmm. And... We've been working together for three weeks. The kid is going to bed happily, sleeping in his room. There's no consequencing. I, I personally don't believe in consequencing at all. Like, I don't believe that we need to remove from... I, I don't personally time out, which is something we can talk about if you want. <laughs> it's, you know, and, and many people have different schools of thought, and I totally respect and appreciate that. I just personally find it. It isn't necessary, and I don't find it as effective as other things that, that we can do. And I find that the more we talk in the language that I'm going to start to describe to you in a few minutes, the more we offer that choice-based, you know, way of speaking with the intentions behind it, you know, being very effective, we don't have to do those things. Mm -hmm. There's a lot less conflict. So this little boy is, they're like, I talked to them just yesterday and they said, oh my God, it's like we have a different child. It's only three weeks. Mm -hmm. He's sleeping through the night. He's going to bed happily. They never had the mom was crying on the phone to me, just saying, "You mean I don't have to consequence him?" She was she burst into tears. She's like, "Thank you so much for that's that's the hardest thing I've ever done, and I felt so wrong doing it. Like it just felt so wrong taking things away from him and telling him to go to his room or go away somewhere. And you know, it's like they don't really. I find they don't really. Nothing connects in the time out. What what's good about a time out is it stops the action from happening. Like, it, it stops it. Right now, it stops it. And so that stops it. It gives you a moment. It gives them a moment. But usually, they want to run right back anyways. And you're not having this peaceful time out. <laughs> you know? yeah. It's not like they're quiet and relaxed and hanging out and you get to all calm down. It's kind of a, it's a punishment for something that you've done. And it's something where they're being removed from you. Mm -hmm. Right? Where they probably need to connect to you. Um like something concrete that when they are when that immediate like when when there's a hit or there's something physical can you give us an example of exactly how you would handle yeah so let's talk about language for a sec and then I'm going to answer that question exactly okay. which is why I wanted to ask you guys in the beginning like give me some of that you know info so that we can really talk directly to it mm -hmm. um and and 
also so that it can make sense for our listeners for mm-hmm. answering their questions. Yeah. So let's talk about language and why we speak a certain way and the science behind why first, and then let's answer that question. Okay. So to sort of geek out on you for a minute about the science behind why we speak. So our frontal lobe, which is the neocortex of the brain, is our language part of the brain. And that's what we have in other animals, mammals, do not have. And so the best way it was described to me by my professor was he said, you've got to think about the frontal lobe, like the neocortex, kind of like a new computer. It, it has glitches. It doesn't, you know, it's not refined yet. It's the first version. It's evolving and it's changing. And it's interesting because we're actually seeing language develop and change. So our brain cannot understand negatives can't process them can't visualize them cannot so if i say to you don't spill your milk what do you see spilling your milk you can't visualize not spilling milk yeah it's impossible to do i've really tried hard (laughs) i was like this is not impossible and it is it's like don't hit your brother don't throw that car yeah you know don't run away (laughs) yeah so you know i was talking about her son's bolting lately (laughs) so don't you know don't open that gate don't throw this don't hit that don't Mm -hmm. do this don't you're going to trip and fall and crack your head open Mm -hmm. we're planting seeds when we say those things Mm -hmm. and it's what we say naturally Mm -hmm. so we need to know and I tell my clients this all the time what do I want you to do let's stop talking about what we don't want them to do what do I want you to do Mm -hmm. okay so we need to set a boundary with our, you know, family is a healthy boundary. What's our expectation? Like, what's the family motto? What's the mm-hmm. expectation that they know that this is what we do here as a family? So we're kind and we're gentle and this is how we behave. Like, we, we are kind and we're gentle to other people's bodies. Not, don't hit your brother. No, that's not nice. That hurts. Mm-hmm. It's like all we're doing is planting more seeds like, and, and, and popping more pictures into their head about doing it. Mm -hmm. So very much like with athletes, like athletes, I'm sure you guys have both had times in your life where people have said, visualize doing this. Mm -hmm. Well, why do we visualize doing that? We visualize it because our brain doesn't know the difference between visual and real. So it's like a dream. You wake up from dreams, you feel like you were right there. It Mm -hmm. happened. I just won the lottery. Where's my million dollars? Like, Mm -hmm. you know, you really feel the emotions. You you Mm -hmm. feel like it happened Mm -hmm. or like something happened and you're like mad at your partner. You're like, you did this to me. (laughs) It's like, that was a dream. Why are you mad at me? But it's, it's all about visualizing it creates the opportunity for it to happen. Yeah. And, and it's a greater opportunity. Mm-hmm. So when athletes are told to visualize a play, all the same you know, neuroreceptors fire as when they're doing it. Right. It's exactly the same. Right. So your body kind of gets tricked into thinking, oh, well, I've already done that before, so I can do it again. That's why, because if you visualize doing it, you're much more likely to be able to do it. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of interesting to kind of see the why behind these things and understand like, oh my gosh, we can process negatives. So when mm-hmm. someone says something not kind to you or not nice or says something critical about you, we don't have a way to store and file that. That's why it sits right in the front of our brain mm-hmm. versus all the nice things that anyone's ever said to you, right? right? So this is, again, evolving. Like we're seeing the power of positive thinking. Well, we're going to use this, you know, positive this and positive mm-hmm. that. It's like right. we're seeing the evolution of language happening now, but understanding why is so important. And teaching our kids this, so this is what I say, where we can process the information and integrate it and receive it in a way that's going to be really beneficial for you. Because we want to plant the seeds and spark those little images for them of the thing we want them to do. Because then they're going to be that much more likely to do it. Right. So it's like, okay, watch your step, hold on tight, use two hands, hold your cup with two hands, please. You know, let's keep our food on our plate. Let's keep our hands on our bodies. You know, let's be gentle to our brother. Like, let's plant the seed of what do I want you to do? What we do want. What do I want you to do? Right. It's so interesting because this is something that I've always done with my students at school, in elementary school. Yeah. Um, But I haven't really thought about it from the lens of my toddler. Mm -hmm. But that's such a great idea. Like we've, we've done um, in my classes essential agreements, which sounds similar to what you're saying, where you agree as a class, because it was an IB school, that's IB language, but you agree as a class what um, 
the way you want the classroom to feel in the classroom community and it's always very mm-hmm. positive language you're not it's not rules you're mm-hmm. not saying no you're saying like um be kind and respectful to each other like things like that right, right. very positive positive speaking the ideal classroom that you want and why not do that in your home as well i think that's an amazing idea yes. yeah 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 Absolutely. And mm-hmm. and I think it's really important to empower the kids to be able to have something that they are allowed to do. You know, when I'm frustrated, what can I do? Mm-hmm. Well, I can go and hit the pillow if I need to hit something. Mm-hmm. You know, I can go and I can say stop to my brother and put my hand out mm-hmm. if I don't want him coming closer to my body. Mm-hmm. I can say that to anybody. Like, mm-hmm. having a physical hand that you can put out, like when I tell, you know, parents this all the time where it's like having that space like your body is not to just be able to be interjected Mm -hmm. with like you can't just come put your hands all over me if you want to Mm -hmm. and putting your hand out is a really good you know (laughs) car alarms going on car alarms (laughs) the door um you know a hand out is a great way to offer that okay so how would that look like if i was if i was teaching my if I was, like, how would I set that up? How would I teach that? The space. Yeah, so I think that you want to, you want to talk about it before, right? So it's very much like, again, preparation is everything, setting them up with these tools beforehand, talking about this so that they know it. You can't really talk about it in the moment. Yeah. It's kind of like talking to somebody who's sleepwalking. <laughs> You're not right. going to get very far. Right. When, you know, when when toddlers are having their minute, ha- like, there's a lot of energy around that, they're really emotional, big emotions come out, and, and you know, that's all, that's all fine and great. However, having the tools beforehand and practicing them is what you want to do. So it's like practicing what, how do we want to feel, like what Stina was saying about her classroom, and it's like, how do you want to feel? How do you want to, what's our, what's our, feeling in our house well we're going to be kind and we're going to be gentle to each other and we're going to use kind words we're going to use kind hands we're going to use gentle hands think about what that looks like right and it's not the negative of we're not gonna hit you know what I mean because then that's bringing in the thing that you do that I don't want Mm -hmm. you to do and Mm -hmm. we're still talking about it the more we talk about that thing the more seeds we plant Right? So what do I want you to do versus what I don't want you to do? And oftentimes we end up getting a bit tricked up with that because we'll go, well, I want you not to hit. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. I want you not to bite me. Yeah. <laughs> I want you yeah. not to throw mm-hmm. your food. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, what's the opposite of that? Keeping your food yeah. on your plate, being gentle with your body, yes. you know, being gentle to my body, please. You know, using our hands for, here's what we can use our hands for gently. This is what I like mm-hmm. when you do... Give examples because we can't expect them to understand what that means either. Mm-hmm. Be gentle. Okay, what is that? Here's what that looks like. Mm-hmm. Show me what gentle looks like here. I'm going to show you. Let's give you a nice hug. Mm-hmm. If I'm feeling like I'm having big feelings and I feel frustrated and I need to hit something, here's what I can do. You know, because it's okay for them to let those feelings out. Mm-hmm. You know, and if it's someone's coming towards your body, teach them. It's like if someone's coming close to your body, you can put your hand out. And that's a spatial thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's like if I put extend my arm out and put a stop hand up, Mm -hmm. don't come closer to me than that. Mm -hmm. And I'm allowed to have that Mm -hmm. foot of space around me, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. It's like stop, you know? And you can say stop, you know, no thank you or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. They're allowed to have a firm voice. They're allowed to say stop, no thank you. They're allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. Telling them to just be these kind, gentle you know, submissive <laughs> people is not what we necessarily want to teach here. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's really training us how to be, <laughs> how to re- no. rethink yes. things, right? It's, it's it is. Rethi- I, like we need to rethink as parents how we're approaching it. And then you need to practice, practice, practice. Like I see my younger one's daycare. She says gentle hands all the time. Yes. Yeah. I've never once heard her say stop. No, don't do that. I've heard yeah. her say, "Oh no, we use gentle hands with our friends." And yeah, right. It's always yeah. the positive. And but she does it every day, all day long. All day long. Um, yeah, because that's her job, right? And, totally. I mean, I guess that's her job as a parent too. But we need to train ourselves to be get good at that. I mean, I was when I when I was doing my practicum, 
I started using this with kids. Like, I really didn't mean to necessarily get into this. We talked about this in the last podcast. Like, this just all happened to me. Yeah. I realized, because I was working with children, and one of the kids I was working with at the time had severe ADHD, had a lot of issues communicating, and a lot of issues being physical with other kids, and a lot of issues self-regulating and down-regulating. Mm-hmm. And he was the reason I started doing all of this, really, because I started using this language with him. I started using what I was using at school with him. And I saw him thriving. I saw him stopping having these outbursts with me. I was his nanny, right, at the time when I was doing this. I was like, oh, I'm still nannying on the side doing this, this, and this. Yeah. And it was amazing how much he was thriving. Mm -hmm. So... I see it and I saw how effective it was and it's obviously grown so much since then. That was 15 years ago, (laughs) which is crazy. But it's like, you know, being the only person who could be solo with him, even his parents couldn't be with him and and they're like, we don't know how to do anything because he would just absolutely lose all of his control. And it's like, how do you talk to somebody so it lands and they process? So with, with the tantrums, with all of this stuff, a lot of it is emotionally letting things out and it's that charge, right? So we want kids to let their emotions out. We want them to have their big explosion. If they're suppressing their feelings or if they're not getting their feelings out, that's also going to be not a good thing. Mm-hmm. But all day long having that be you know, your only interaction is probably because that's where the cup's being filled. Mm-hmm. which is what we were talking about earlier, right? Mm-hmm. So looking at these interactions and you coming down to a level where this isn't a big deal. Mm-hmm. This happened, we're going to deal with it and move on, and we're going to not have it be the negative cup filling. We're going to reframe it, mm-hmm. and we're going to get into a place where it's, okay, how do we move through this? Timeouts, I find, aren't as effective for this because, like what I was saying before, I truly think that having a, okay, well, let's take a minute till everybody's ready. Okay, you know what? If this person's hit that person, like you were saying before, you know, your four-year-old's frustrated. Mm -hmm. They really wanted to play with that toy, Mm -hmm. right? And so setting him up, too, and saying, hey, you know what? I know that you were having fun playing with this, and just remember sometimes that your brother can come in, and he doesn't really know that you want to play by yourself. So if you want to play by yourself, maybe you want to go over here and do that. Mm -hmm. Give him options so that he's got tools. Right. Not necessarily just in that moment. Right. Right. <laughs> okay. Right? Love that. Does that make sense? Yes. So it's like giving him tools where it's like, hey, you know when we're playing with our special car? Yeah, sometimes it's really frustrating when your brother comes and takes that, isn't it? So you know where you can play with that where he can't come grab it from you is up on the table or mm-hmm. over here. So just remember and when he does come and do that and if he does come and do that, what can we say to him to make, and we can say, hey, you know, stop, I'm playing with this car. Mm-hmm. Or come talk to mom and say, mom, help, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, give him tools, walk through it. Get him to repeat that to you. Get him to practice it with you. Right. Make it funny, make it role play. Right. You know. Yes. So I think that knowing how to approach those things and giving them the tools and you having the tools to do it are really important. Mm-hmm. But also, you know, knowing where to guide them and how to guide them with that positive language, too, right? So I was talking before about a lot of the way we communicate is either threatening language or questions, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of if or then. If this, then that. Mm -hmm. If you're saying if, Mm -hmm. if this, then that... You're, usually that's a threat. So if you don't, you know, if you guys don't put your toys away, then we're not going to go to the park later. Or if you don't, you know, finish your lunch, then you don't get to have a cookie, right? It's like, right. it's more, well, you know, in that situation, I would go, okay, guys, so time to clean up, up our toys because I know we really want to go to the park, right? So it's time to clean up our toys if that's what we want to do. That's right. a statement. Yeah. Mm-hmm a statement but it's also it's up to you guys so it's your choice boys if you want to go to the park it's time to clean up our toys now mm-hmm. if you're not ready no problem we're, we're gonna just stay home mm-hmm. and offer three chances like I always say repeat it three times mm-hmm. okay so it's like when I say it the first time if you're like no because the, the follow-through is key mm-hmm. and that's where people get stuck is they're like sure I'm giving the choice I gave it a hundred times they didn't take it 
well, how do you follow through on that? Because sometimes it just has to be over, right? It's yeah, got to right. finish. It's got to be done. So it's, okay, so let's just use, let's use brushing teeth as an example. Okay, so it's time to go upstairs and brush our teeth. So let's go do that now. You can do it yourself or I can help you do that. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm watching my show or I'm playing with my whatever, right? So it's, okay, so it is time to go brush our teeth. Not time to brush our teeth, okay? Mm -hmm. So when we say okay or do you want to go brush your teeth now? Well, of course I don't. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. No, the answer is no to yeah. that, for sure. Yeah. You know, even if you say, like, you can get kids in a no cycle, no matter what you say, you can offer them candy and they'll say no. If mm -hmm. they're in the no cycle, mm -hmm. it's just like whatever you say is a no. Mm -hmm. You have to frame it a different way. So it's, I can, it's time to do this. Your choice, you can go up yourself or I can help you. Mm -hmm. Right? And after three, after three times of me asking you, your choice, and this is a bit, this is a bit wordy, and it kind of is a bit of a mind twist, is you've now made the choice for me to choose. Okay, so it looks like you're not ready to choose. Mm -hmm. No problem. No problem. I'm going to help you. Right? Yeah. I'm going to help you. And that's when maybe you'll escort them to the bathroom and they're like, no, I want to do it. I want to. You know, and that's a big, this is pivotal because this is where they learn. Okay? This is that point in connection where they're like oh you follow through and I didn't like it when you did that very much I mm -hmm. prefer to choose myself you didn't sit here and ask me a hundred times mm -hmm. you followed through when you said you were going to and I would really be clear and also at that point if they're like no I want this you know um let's use let's use fruit actually as an example because this is a really easy one to see it with is okay time for a snack we're having an apple or an orange which one would you like mm -hmm. I want cookies Okay, so maybe we can have some cookies in a little bit. It's not, no, we're not having cookies, because now we're going to cry about not having cookies. Right. It's, yeah, maybe we can have some cookies in a little while. Or we can, yeah, of course we can have cookies tomorrow. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. sure, we can have cookies next week. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It doesn't have to be right now. Oh, yeah, sure, of course we can have those a little bit later. Right now we're going to have a snack, and it's an apple or an orange, so you can choose or I can choose for you. No, I want a cookie. Okay, so I'm going to ask you one more time, and then Mommy's going to choose for you if you're not ready to pick. No problem. Apple or an orange, which one would you like? You pick. No, I want a cookie. Okay, so we're going to have an apple. I want an orange. <laughs> Always that. happens. Yeah, yeah. Always happens. Yeah, that's right. So, like, this happened this morning. Usually, yeah. we go, fine, have the orange. Yeah. Because it's easy. It yeah. doesn't matter. But that's the override that happens where it's like they're taking you to the end of the rope. They're overriding what you're saying. Yeah. So, you're all, it's, that's a negative tension thing. It's, it's going down the road of no, 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 no. Oh, you made a decision? No, I'm going to make the other one. So would you give them the orange or you'd say, I would no, give we're them the apple. apple. Okay. I would say, well, actually, we're going to have the apple. I want the orange. And be ready for the meltdown. Mm -hmm. But this is going to stop the meltdowns down the road from happening. Okay? So it's back to I'm going to have the down, apple. Yeah. And it's like, well, you know what? I know that, yeah, you, you, you like to choose, don't you? That's why I always offer you a choice. Mm -hmm. That's why I always ask you what you want. Mm -hmm. This is child-led choice-based mm -hmm. with a boundary, right? So after three times of me asking you, if you're not ready to choose, no problem. I'm going to choose for you. No problem. Looks like you're not ready. I'll choose for you. No, I want the other thing. Yeah, I know. That's why I always ask you. And you just remember next time when I ask you what you'd like to do that you like to pick. You don't like it so much when I pick. It is a little bit tough. So we're going to have an apple and maybe next time we have a snack we'll have an orange. But just remember when I ask you, you like better when you pick. This applies to everything. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it applies to bedtime, it applies to brushing teeth, it applies to leaving the house. Okay, so did you want to get your boots on or did you want me to help you? No. I want my sandals in the snow. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 Okay, so we're going to put our boots on so either I can help you or you can do it yourself. Which one would you like to do? Right. It's not... Okay, so, like, you're, you're not asking questions. Like, you're making statements, and there's an end point. Here right. are your options. Which one would you like? Would you like my help, or did you want to do it yourself? Right. There's choices for everything, even dangerous things. It's like, I want the knife. Okay, so I can use the knife, or we can put the knife away. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Mommy can use that, or we can put it away. So if you'd like me to cut that, I will do that. Thank you very much for giving me this very dangerous knife. <laughs> That I forgot was on the counter, <laughs> and yeah. I'm going to use that knife to cut, you know, our our fruit up, and then we can have this, or we can put it away. Okay, so I'm listening to all this, uh -huh. so many amazing ideas, and I'm trying to think how I can apply it to my 
most stressful problem right now, which is having a sprinter on my hands. So what does he do when you when he's sprinting? Like, does he look at you? Does he watch what you're doing? Does he sprint? And then you're just going. It's after usually him. when I like have my hands full of like groceries and baby or like something, and he'll look. Yeah, he'll look, and then he'll do like a few little little sneaky steps. Yeah. And I'll be like, oh, Makai, don't stay with mommy. Stay with mommy. We stay with mommy, and then he'll and sprint. And like just this morning, we were in a coffee shop on a busy street. I had the baby, I had a hot cup of coffee in my hands, and I look down for a second, I look up, and he looks at me, and then as soon as we make eye contact, bam, he's sprinting out the door onto Granville Street in Vancouver, for those of you that know how busy that street wow. is. Yeah, and I have to run, holding the baby, and drop everything else, and I've actually now gotten to the point where in like busy places, I've yelled at people, I've been like, stop that kid! Like I've screamed at people to help me stop wow. him, because oh. he will not... My stop goodness. and we've scary. tried yeah it's, it's scary really so then i start scary. to revert to stop my guy stop no yeah. stop and then it's all this like negative freak out language right. and then i get him back from running away and i just say we don't run away from mommy it scares mommy it makes mommy feel scared right and he keeps doing it so and and i mean this is it's gonna sound maybe harsh but that's your emotions onto him right, right? yeah so that's like you you he's responsible for your emotions in that case. And I have tried and to tell him, you're going to get hurt. I've told him that too. Totally. You might get hurt. Yes. And this you... is dangerous. Yeah. And you're going to get hurt. And mommy's job is to keep you safe. Yes. That's mommy's job is to keep you safe. So a couple things here is, one, I would probably set up a situation where you're intentionally not bringing him somewhere. Okay. And intentionally, he has to stay home doing something that's not as fun. Okay. Because we need to make sure that he's safe. And... He's going to stay home with grandma or somebody else. Be like, okay, well, baby and I are going to go, you know, I know that you love coming here and to the coffee shop with us. And we just need to really practice being safe on the street. So today, mommy is just going to go on her own and we can practice being safe on the street at another time. And I'm going to go do this essentially without you today because we weren't able to be safe. So having a time where unfortunately you're going to be in a situation where he does it again and say, okay, you know what? We're having a hard time being safe right now, so next time mommy comes to do coffee or whatever it is, and it doesn't have to be a long time, but you're going to have to stay home with, with grandma, and I really love it when you come with us, but mommy has to make sure that you stay safe, because cars are very dangerous, and being on the street by yourself without being beside mommy is not safe. Mm -hmm. So you have to stay right beside mommy, and we'll practice this, but today I have to go to the coffee shop, and you know, you're going to stay here with grandma, or you're going to stay here with auntie, or you're going to do something else, so, so that he's like... I'm missing out on something. Like, mm -hmm. that's... I want to come with you. And what if you don't have that option? Uh, and this is where it's practice it on purpose one time. You know what I mean? Like, it won't take much for that to be like, what do you mean I'm missing out on that thing? It's like, mm. do one or two of those where it's like, okay, well, you know, we're going to try again. Or practice it. And when you're together, I would have it be something where you have to be prepared for him to do that. Mm -hmm. Maybe having him be motivated to stay with you when you leave the stores where it's like you have to hold on to mommy's pocket and we're going to sing our funny song. So it's like doing something that's silly and funny that gives him a lot of attention because he's looking for attention. Mm -hmm. So gives him a lot of attention that it's like let's do something that you're looking forward to, to having a funny little thing and we do a funny little song that we sing together while you're holding on to mommy's pocket. And that's what we do while we walk to the car. Do you know what I mean? So it's like yeah. he has to have something, a reason to want to get your attention because that's what he wants. Mm -hmm. He wants a lot of attention. And this is, again, we're filling the cup the wrong way if mm -hmm. we're doing it by this very big emotional experience. And I'm mm -hmm. sure you're, you're very rattled and scared and then he's probably upset. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, he laughs. Yeah. He laughs at me. Right. <laughs> he thinks it's funny. Because, yeah. yeah, he thinks it's funny. So, so I, I remember try. with Jake that happening, and our thing was, and uh, it did it did work was uh, the stroller. So if you can't walk and stay with me, then you need to be in the stroller. Right. Yeah, right. Which so I, when I'm you're sure. not safe, when you're not safe, yeah, you'll have to be in the stroller if you're making that choice. Yeah. If you're choosing to, you know, if you're going to choose not to stay with mommy, mm -hmm. that you know, mommy's job is to keep you safe. That's mommy's job. Yeah. I have to keep you safe. Same within the house. It's like, mm -hmm. 
Um, you know, kids who get in and out of their rooms at night, oftentimes, I will say, put up a baby gate just for a couple of days in their doorway because it's not safe for them to be walking around the house at night. Mm -hmm. It's really not. And, and telling them, hey, we always want to have the gate off your door. You know, we always want to have you walking beside us. I always want to have you beside me. You know, I, I don't want you to be in the stroller. I know you don't like that. So we have to be really safe while we're on the street. So what do I want you to do? Hey, this is your choice. Mm -hmm. I'm not choosing to put you in the stroller. You're making this decision for yourself. Right. Again, it's their, they're in control of that. Yeah. I always want to take you with me. But, you know, today, because we had a really tough, you know, time being safe yesterday, yeah. um, that means that we have to stay in the stroller. You know, that's that's just something we're going to have to do. So bring the stroller with you. Yeah, bring an umbrella stroller. Bring, yeah. you know, yeah. that one. Yeah. Bring an umbrella stroller. Do something like that where you know that mm -hmm. you're, it's just there just mm -hmm. in case. Mm -hmm. We're going to bring the stroller just in case because we need to make sure that we're safe, right? Yeah. 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 Okay, so it looks like maybe you need to be in the stroller. No problem. Nice. And, like, walk an extra block with it just so it's, like, yeah. you're so in the stroller. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, awesome. That's super helpful. Um, so moving on, we want to talk a little bit about sleep and how, how toddler behavior connects to their sleep as well and then we'll be able to touch on some of the questions that we've gotten um, from our followers. Yeah I think it's really normal for a lot of people a lot of my clients who were you know babies and now they're toddlers they were sleeping beautifully and all of a sudden it's all come crashing to a halt <laughs> and you know a lot of the time people will say again like that client I was referring to earlier where it's like oh well it's you know you've, you've got to do a cry it out with toddler. I strongly disagree with that. I strongly disagree with cry it out altogether but um, I always see it as a behavior issue that's coming up and I, I look at it and go okay the attachment and the connection is probably something that's getting skewed here. A lot of this negative attention seeking is probably happening. You have toddlers who are a bit, um, you know, unsure of a boundary. So a lot of the times, you know, when people think attachment parenting, they're like, I just say yes to everything or whatever. Yeah. And that's not true. We need to create that healthy boundary for our kids to know what to expect, when to expect it, and when, that, that's where I say ask the three times and then follow through. What am I following through? You know, oh, mom's serious she makes me go do this or she's going to pick which fruit I'm going to eat or she's going to pick my shoes if I'm not ready to do this but we're always giving them the opportunity to help right and right. for them to make their own choices so really empowering them to feel like they're in charge with a very healthy boundary so this happens at nighttime too so it's like I call it the loop of conversation is what usually starts is we're putting them to bed and they're like I'm hungry I'm thirsty I have to pee I have to this I have to tell you something I need a yeah. hug I need a yeah. kiss I need a I'm hot I'm cold my yeah. blankets too itchy I don't want it I'm, yeah. it's gone I need my I need my giraffe I don't want my bunny <laughs> I you know it's yeah. like oh my god exactly <laughs> That's exactly what we're going through <laughs> we have this little this little Paw Patrol puppy that is like I'm serious like smaller than my fist and my youngest every night insists on that it needs to be in the bed. And so we are like going through the house, lifting pillows up, moving the couch. It's like, it's small enough where you just like, yeah, it drives yeah. you crazy. And, and yeah. he will not like, he'll lose his mind until it's in yeah. his crib. Yeah. yeah. You need to buy like 10 of them. I, yeah. I don't even and know where I got it. Honestly, it's like the loop of conversation. This is what yeah. happens. And so I would say, like, we, we need to appease it a, a bit, <laughs> but we can't get going in and have it be the momentum, right? So it's like, again, we need to talk about what's happening, so get them tucked in, get the whole nighttime thing to happen, have it be really, again, like, this has to be not a stressful time. If bedtime is stressful for you, could you relax and then drift off into a lovely sleep? Like, no. Mm -hmm. If you were, like, being rushed into bed and somebody was annoyed with you and, you mm -hmm. know, you were frustrated and then someone was like, that's it, it's enough, it's time to go to sleep, like, you'd yeah. be like, okay, <laughs> like, yeah. and you'd be feeling not so great. Yeah. So have the time. If they're like, one more story, no, another story, no, another story, no, one more story. It's like, if kids who are really motivated for books are having trouble with that, I would say only have X number of books in their room and have the rest of them out of the room. Mm -hmm. And have them pick beforehand which ones are we reading. We're only reading two or we're only reading three. And once they're done, like, that's that's it for the books. And then if they go one more, one like, no, this is, you know, and not no, it's like, oh, well, we're actually finished our books. These were the ones we picked. So 
Now it's time for bed. So I can tuck you in or you can get in yourself. What do you want to do? Do you want to hop up or did you want my help? You know, did you want to pick your pajamas or did you want my help? Here, here are three pajamas. Which one would you like to, like, getting them involved, having them making their own choices about things. And then once it's time for bed, it's like, okay, it's time to go to sleep. It's time to close our eyes. It's time to lie down in our bed. You know, I will stay here with you for X amount of minutes, however long it is. Maybe you stay with them until they fall asleep. Maybe they fall asleep independently. Um, but for kids who are regressing here, I would say staying with them until they fall asleep, probably for a short period of time, is helpful. And I would say I will stay here with you until you fall asleep, you know, but it's time to close our eyes. It's time to relax our body. Now, again, walking them through the steps of what we want them to do, right? Mm -hmm. Not, no, don't jump up out of your bed. Don't jump on your, no, we don't come out the door. We don't do this. We don't do that. It's what do I want you to do? Mm -hmm. And I would say, again, the three times or a couple of minutes, whichever kind of feels right to you is, okay, so you are goofing around, you're getting out of your bed, you're not staying in your bed, you're having a bit of a fit, you're, you know, trying to do something else, you're talking a lot. Um, okay, so it looks like you're not quite ready for sleep yet, no problem, I'll be back in a minute and let's try again. Leave. Okay. Leave for a moment. Yeah. You know, and this mm -hmm. is a time where it's literally like leave for 10 seconds. Right. Because yeah. you will have to shut the door, and I'm not a fan of, like, shut the door, let them scream. Yeah. It's shut the door for 10 seconds. This is, again, that, that moment of, oh, you're going to follow through on that. And, mm -hmm. hey, wait a minute, I really do want you to stay here. Mm -hmm. So, okay, what do you want me to do? <laughs> like, right. yeah. And they're going to pay attention. Instead of you getting to a place where you're threatening, if you don't lie down, I'm leaving. That's mm -hmm. a very different feeling than, okay, so it looks like you're not quite ready for sleep yet, so I'll be back in a minute and we can try again. Mm -hmm. Right. Very different message, awesome. you know? Yeah. So it's, I'd love to help you. I would love to stay with you until you fall asleep. So this is for parents who are staying until they're falling asleep. Mm -hmm. I'll stay with you until you fall asleep. I'd love to help you. So it's time to lie down. It's time to close our eyes. If you're not ready, that's no problem. I'll be back in a minute and we can try again. I'm here to help you, but we need to be lying down trying to sleep. Mm -hmm. Not here to help you play. I'm not here to help you chat. Right? right? I'm here to help you sleep. I would love to stay with you. Oh, okay, well, it looks like you're not ready, so I'll be back in just a moment. We'll try again. The effectiveness of the leaving for 10 seconds and coming back is just the, the follow-through where they're like, hey, like I was saying, oh, what do you want me to do? Okay, yeah, right, let me stay here. Okay. If you, and then you can gradually just kind of, like, be outside the door saying that. With the door open, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm right here. I'm going to sit outside your door until you fall asleep, where... Now we're talking that they don't need the visual. They only need to hear you. And if they're, like, checking in on you, now be careful of anxious behavior here where they start to check in, check in, check in. I did this as a kid. I was a terrible, terrible anxiety as a sleeper. I thought, yeah, I thought, like, I was going to be left home alone. It's like, yeah, I made up I stories in my head. Yeah, yeah. I good. made up scary stories in my head about yeah. what was going to happen to me, and I was this, like, lunatic kid sleeping <laughs> in the, her bunk bed, like, a foot away from the ceiling with this bright light on, holding my mom's shirt, like, trembling, because I made up a story, and yeah, I was just yeah. telling myself something, right? Yeah. So, you know, with the anxiety factor, you have to think about kids who are calling out a lot, being like, Mom, Mom, are you there? Hey, Mom, or even, like jolting up to check on you like are you still there you know what I mean and we want to be really clear with them too about I will stay with you until you fall asleep and then I am going to my room mm -hmm. so when you wake up I won't be here <laughs> you know right. so that they know I'm, I'm like it's where did you go when I fell asleep you were there I woke up you're not why aren't you here you know right right, <clears throat> right. so, so having, they're not like you just disappeared yeah yeah so having them know where you are and then if you're outside the room once you get to that place where you can be outside the room and they're not going to like that first step no matter what mm -hmm. right so but it's being consistent hey I'd love to be here for you but this is what it looks like and that leaving the room after a few minutes just for 10 seconds every couple minutes usually is you're going to see them escalate at first but they come around because they're like oh you're being very consistent here I guess this is what's happening you know mm -hmm. this is a very consistent thing you're doing I don't like it but this is I guess this is what we're doing right right and it will give them a sense of calm and a sense of peace once they realize what's happening. So then when you get to the place of sitting outside the door, it's just the verbal cue of like, oh, yeah, I know where you are. I know you're there. But if they're calling for you, it's a, okay, well, it looks like you're not quite ready for sleep yet. I'll be back in a minute. Like, don't let that be like, yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, I'm still here. Like, that's also not sleeping. Mm -hmm. That's not doing the thing we want to do, right? Mm -hmm. So... 
<clears throat> when it comes to, I know one of the questions was about night terrors. Okay, yeah. so we have, yeah, so we have one that is, um, it says, what to do for a four-year-old who is waking in the night with nightmares? So a lot of the times this has a few different things happening with it. It could be, you know, some of the kids I've worked with, it's they're drinking a lot of fluids close to bedtime and it's very stimulating for them. Okay. It could be waking them up. Try making sure that the fluids are distributed equally throughout the day and they're not guzzling a whole bunch of water or even fruits or juice or something. If you have a sensitive kid, sugars can be very stimulating for them. So mindful of that is just something that might be helpful yeah. and could be, might not do anything. A kid like this, you know, and most kids, they like to know what's coming up next. Okay, so when you're putting your kids to bed, saying to them, when am I going to see you next? It's the last point of connection, right? Bedtime is a time where they're losing connection. It's the very end. They're not going to see you again until the morning. So a lot of kids will have these big meltdowns or the tantrums or wanting to prolong bedtime because it's like, but, you know, it's all gone after this. Right. Right. So we want to make sure that we're letting them know when's the next point of connection. Are we going to have dreams about each other when we go to sleep? Are we going to have, you know, dreams about each other when we go to sleep? In our dreams, what are we going to do? In the morning when we wake up, oh, we've set up our puzzle to do. We're going to do our puzzle before mommy takes so you to plug school. Them with positive things All these things gonna that you're going to be doing. And, you know, the faster you fall asleep, the sooner I get to see you in right. the morning. Like, there's something to look forward to. It's not just, oh, end of everything nothing left. No, I know for sure that they're going to be excited for what's happening in the morning. Do you think there's certain um, like things they shouldn't be watching or reading or doing for before sure. bed? For sure. I mean devices. Yeah. I would I would stay clear of all devices at least an hour. At least an hour. I would prefer two before bed. Yeah. So does devices mean actually TV? Yeah. <laughs> Screen time. Yeah. We're so bad with that. Oh. It's hard. It's really hard. So, you know, it's something we're trying to do different things and getting creative about what does that look like. I also really like, so for bedtime, kids to look forward to something. Again, toddlers, I really like using things like audiobooks for them. So you can turn on a little audiobook for them to listen to. So it's like once you leave the room, they get to listen to their great story. And it's a bedtime story or it's a song or it's music or it's mm -hmm. something where maybe you have a wireless speaker in their room. You can control it from outside mm -hmm. and it's going to be their end of the day. Thing. So that's a great, great suggestion. A lot of kids really like that. Yeah, there is also like podcast kids, kids, music, podcast. kids um, uh, kids guided meditations yeah yeah like guided meditations for for sleep for calming them down all of those things are really awesome mm -hmm. and I would say that they're nice to have them look forward to so to speak mm -hmm. right my kids love 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 reading at night which is awesome because we can spend like an hour reading it just requires me to stop doing all the things right. on my to-do list like right. cleaning up after dinner and right getting ready for the next day um, right yeah and with three kids we find that my husband and I split and divide and you know he yeah, takes yeah. one I take two or he yeah. takes two I take one and it's hard. hard. It's really hard to not do the screen time. We've been trying. That's one of our big goals this year is to not do screen time an hour before bed. So right. we've been really, really trying. Yeah. It'll make a big difference. Mm -hmm. Very big difference. Um, behaviorally and just for their quality of sleep. Yeah. So we've got like some problems in our, <laughs> our nighttime <laughs> routine. Like I, I just think we're so, we're just so tired by the I end know. of the day. Like we're just so Tired. All we want to do is watch a show or, yeah. Yeah, it's but tough. just can't. I mean, it's, yeah, it's tough. So, you know, doing things that are, that wind down in the last hour to hour and a half, even if you just start slow, like do it realistically, like 30 minutes. You know what I mean? Like try, yeah. try to start building on it so that it doesn't feel really overwhelming for you to take that on. Right. And I think that's, again, like look, what's realistic? Is half an hour realistic to start with? Yeah, build on it. It's better than zero right yeah. so looking forward to things is huge and I think with a lot of kids like across the board the info that I just gave about sleep is pretty similar mm -hmm. for most toddlers I would I would really encourage 
letting them know what's coming up next. What are they doing tomorrow? Tell them what they are going to be doing in their day. You know, like mm -hmm. they don't know. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's because we assume that they don't need you, but they can't articulate that to us. Right, right. Right? So it's like it's up to us to tell them what to expect next. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay, great. And uh, there was another one. So I have an almost three year old who has always been a great sleeper, but now resists that time. So again, probably some stuff going on with, I would be curious to see what's happening at bedtime in terms of, is it stressful? Is it rushed? You know, is the child having that loop of conversation going on? How do we just redirect it back to, here's what we're doing. It's time for sleep. It's time to lie down. Be really consistent about what you're asking. Mm -hmm. Be there. Be supportive. You know, you're you're responding to all their needs. You're not creating a stressful environment where now that energy and the the negativity of right. filling the cup is is what's happening. Versus, like, if at bedtime they're getting all this big attention for not going to sleep. That's like, great, we get to spend an hour together having this problem. <laughs> right. You know, and we right. don't want that negative attention seeking, you know, filling of the cup to happen. Mm -hmm. We want it to be a really fun time, something to look forward to. Like you said, it's a time where the parents are freaking tired. Yeah. So you've got to find it in you to make it a fun thing because mm -hmm. it's going to make everything take a lot less time. Mm -hmm. Oh, so hard. <laughs> <laughs> so hard. Yeah. Amazing. Were there any other ones that you had? Any other questions that you had? To I think there was one more. I feel like... Uh, oh, when do you know your toddler is ready to drop naps for life? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. yeah. So, age is one thing, but I think that's not always the case. So, it's like somewhere usually between two and a half and three and a half is when they drop their nap, typically. It often comes when, like, the new baby has arrived. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, when you them. desperately so like, need those naps. That's exactly what's happening. Hold on a second. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. But yeah. oftentimes it can be like between two and two and a half, it'll start to happen, but it, it's not real. It's just a bit of a, it's a bit of a developmental milestone happening for them. So it looks like it's happening, but it isn't. And I would still encourage a quiet time, so to speak. Yeah. Even yes. if it's just like, again, a child's not going to be able to be independent on their own for an hour in their room. That's not going to happen without them being upset or coming in and out or whatever it is, unless they're still in a crib. Um, if you can practice 20 minutes, if you can start doing it with them, having those things to look forward to, to do it saying, Hey, you know what? You're allowed to sit in your you know, bed and have your books and have your music on and have the lights low. And we're going to introducing something like the grow clock. I love the grow clock for kids for night and mm -hmm. nap. It's just a way for them to see when is it time to wake up, when do I have to stop, you know, right. like, when is bedtime over essentially, and when is morning starting, and when is my nap done. Um, <clears throat> so I would say that using a tool like that for them to visually see, oh, okay, it's time for me to stop, but making it short at first. Um, but you'll start to just see them, when do they for sure need to drop the nap, is you're going to start to see them not always taking it. Right? Yeah, like making it through without losing their mind. Yeah, and it's like, oh, you know, I passed out in the car. Yeah. Or, oh, I passed out, you know, while we were watching a show. Yeah. And it's like at nap time they go down for their nap, but they're not really falling asleep. They're kind of playing the whole time. So if, you've, if you know that you're around that two and a half mark, like before two and a half, I would say it's too soon. Yeah. Um, it's too soon to drop the nap, mm -hmm. like entirely. That's yeah. probably not happening. Yeah. But keeping the quiet time till at least three years old, because they do need that. You know, totally. they really do need to be able to just calm their little bodies down and to, like, down-regulate all their energy so that it's yeah. not an overwhelming rest of your day where they can barely cope, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that that's what we're really looking at is creating that healthy, good, a little bit of downtime, ideally it's going to be about an hour. If you need to spend time with them doing that at first and building up to it, then great. If not, yeah. you know, and they're doing it on their own, no problem. But I would say somewhere between two and a half and three and a half is quite normal. Some kids nap till they're five and they yeah. come home from kindergarten and they're half day and they need to go pass out. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've had kindies you know? in my class fall asleep during right. afternoon quiet time. And in kindergarten, I've always implemented like a quiet time after lunch. 
Yeah. 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 Kids are either, we listen to high, nice car, we're listening to relaxation music, or I'm reading them a story, or yeah, something quiet, and I'll I'll, I'll see a couple of them fall asleep, especially at the beginning of kindergarten. Totally. Yeah. Okay, so, oh my gosh, so many amazing things we've learned today. I've I've been trying to, like, um, keep track of the tips you've been giving us, so you fill in for me if I've, I've missed some. Yeah. Um, but if we were to just go back on this entire conversation, so a few takeaways, um, be preventative. So in your planning, in your language, in your actions as a parent. Um, and then fill their cup with positive um, interactions, positive attention instead of negative attention. Yeah. Um, something, oh, create something to look forward to. And also make sure that kids know what to expect. Yeah. Um, and then telling them what you want them to do, right? So using right. that language and being sure to implement what do I want you to do versus the don'ts. Right. That's a big one. Right. So easy for us to naturally just say, don't do this, you know, don't hit, don't do, you know, right. don't run down the stairs, don't run down the street. Yeah. Don't, 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 don't. Where it's like, what do I want you to do? Okay, you're going to you know, walk with mommy, you're going to hold my hand, and we're going to be really safe walking down the street, and this is what we're going to do. You know, yeah. we're sing our funny little song while we walk. You know, like, yeah. here's what we're going to do. Prevention on your end and giving them the tools to understand what I do want to do. Planting those little seeds of yeah. visual, you know, information for them. Visuals. Visuals. The visual so information. Giving them visuals yeah. and making sure that they're child-led yes. um, choices. You got it. Okay. Amazing. Great. Wow. Fantastic. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for having we me. We love Thank having you here. Oh, I love it too. <laughs> yeah. That, that was awesome. really helpful. Good. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. And make sure if you have other questions for Rock a Baby um, or for us, you can always send us a message on our Instagram pages or Facebook or yeah, all the places. <laughs> <laughs> got kids in the background again. The kids are all here. The kids are all here. <laughs>